In this tutorial, we're going to cover how to go about setting up an A3 document for the two A3 posters that you'll require for your May exam. So the first one will be a series of the five posters that you've selected with the name or the term for each phase. Then the next slide will be the three chosen slides with a link to your GIF that you'll be currently making. Okay, so I'm going to cover how to go and set up this document so that everything's the correct size and set up the formatting in such a manner to work with your A2 sketch sheet that you're busy preparing. Okay, so let's start a new project. I'm going to go back to slides and I'm going to start a completely blank document. Okay, this is a presentation. Think of this as the equivalent to PowerPoint. Okay, it works the same way, but it's a great free tool to help you set up basic presentations. Okay, so before, before we start, the first thing that we need to do is we need to address and fix the page size. So you'll do that if you go to the file, the file tab, you're going to go to page setup, and here we're going to select custom. Now just remember this is in centimeters, so just if you can input a proper size, just make sure that you're using centimeters and not millimeters. Okay, so centimeters. So we're going to use an A3 sheet landscape. Okay, so it's width by height. So this is going to be 420 by 29.7. Press apply. Okay, now it would have adjusted the size. Okay, now we've got our presentation set up. Okay, before we commence, we'll need to set up the formatting to suit your A2 formatting. So in essence, we're gonna have seven columns across and then four rows, okay? So in order to do that, we'll need to set up a diagram or a shape to the correct size and then we'll go and start dividing this up into the correct. Using guidelines, we'll set up a proper grid structure. But just remember, it's seven columns and four rows. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to go to the, the toolbar beneath here and you can use a shape. You could also go and use the insert and go and find shape here, square. So I'm going to start with a square. Okay, it will bring in a basic square. When you click on the square, it will allow you to change and go and resize this object correctly. And remember, we're always using centimeters. Okay, so now that it's got an object, we need to work out, use a calculator to do this. Okay, use a calculator. So 420 divided by 7. Okay, equals 2. So it's 6. So the width of this will be 6 centimeters. Now we need to work out the rows. Cancel that. So 29.7 divided by 4 equals 7.42 okay so this is what we will need to use you can copy this information just like this and you can paste this into this column over here okay what's neat about this if i put this in the corner so if i move the shape now to the correct location i can now duplicate the shape a couple times and with the shape selected you can go and change the full color Okay, you can make it transparent so you don't see anything. It'll just give me a shape, so that's an option. Okay, so that's, I'm going to use a light gray. You can change the thickness of line. Okay, so you can go and change a whole lot of information. This I'm going to make quite light gray. The boundary, I'm going to change it to maybe black. It doesn't really matter. Okay, you can just keep this as a blank shape. So in this instance, what I recommend you do is I'm not going to have a border. You switch it to transparent, it means nothing. Here you can change it to one pixel, it doesn't matter. Okay. Here I'm just going to make sure it's transparent. So you don't actually see that border. Okay. Now that I've got the shape, you hold shift down and you can drag and it'll duplicate. So I'll probably just control. Okay, use control to duplicate that shape. Alright, so we're going to use control again. So here I'm just going to do a basic setup and you'll notice that it'll snap every single time. I'm using control and dragging at the same time. And here I'm going to double check. I'm going to confirm if my maths is correct. Okay, so if I confirm this one more time. Good. 
Now I should have one, two, three, four, five. So I've got five columns. Now if I grab all this information at once, just remember this is hard to zoom out. So you need to remember, don't use your scrolling mouse to do this. Go and say fit screen. Now you can select everything at the top and you can simply use control drag down again. And we can snap it, control, snap it, then control, and then snap it. Now you'll notice this would have fitted perfectly on my sheet. You can select all of these shapes. Okay, you can go and change all of this information very quickly by selecting them all. Now you see it's actually set up a grid. What I prefer to do now, just so that it applies to the next sheet as well, I like to go and start using guidelines. I like to use guidelines to make this work. Okay. Now you could have done add vertical or horizontal. What you can simply do is you drag, you can drag guidelines from the site. Now you can snap them into the correct location. By default, it will give you a center. It'll give you two center ones so that you can move to the correct location. Now I'm just grabbing dry guidelines from the ruler. You can grab one here, put one over here. Okay, and what's nice about guidelines, you can switch them on and off. I'm just using this technique so that I can quickly generate my guidelines. My guidelines I can switch on and off. Okay. Okay, great. Now with all of that selected, I can select all of those shapes and simply delete those shapes. Because now technically I've got my formatting of my sheet established. Okay, so now I've got my format of my sheet established. So here we're going to have one, two, three, four, five. And here we're going to have an area where you can add your text for your poses etc okay now that you've established this you're going to go and duplicate the slide okay so now we've got two slides that we can use and you'll notice that the guidelines work on both and what I like about this option if you're using guidelines okay if you go to view you can say you can switch off the guidelines and then switch them back on this is what I like about it okay and you can clear all guidelines as well now that I've established these guidelines You've all been working on your PNG cutouts of your different poses. Now you need to start bringing in those poses one by one. What's also neat about Google Slides is that if you go to insert and you can go and say images, okay, you can also just use this insert command here. It will give you access to your Google Photos. So if you're using your Google Photos correctly, you can see that all of your photos will now be here and be linked in. Here I've got a GIF which I've made, because we're going to ignore that for the time being, but I'm going to focus on bringing these images in. So I'm going to start building my different poses. Okay, so here I'm going to use these guidelines now. This is what's neat about this, it will snap to these guidelines. Okay, this is what's nice about it. And I'm going to snap this pose. So that will work. We can format the image. If it doesn't fit in strictly, we can change that. So just remember, you've got an option, you can go and if you click on the image, you can also use a crop tool. The crop tool will crop the shape. The crop tool will crop this image. And if you exit, now you see that it's smaller. So just make sure that your poses fit in neatly in each one of these squares and try and center it. I'm going to quickly drag in the rest of my... Okay, I'm going to grab this one. What's interesting, remember you've got a height dimension, but it's totally up to you. I can just snap it to there. And drag this corner back and snap it to the guideline. Now you can nudge it on your keys, your arrow keys on your keyboard. Just remember you can use your arrow keys up and down. Make sure you snap it and now I'm going to move that in. Okay, so you can see this is not, this is fairly quick. Okay, so bring in all your poses. I'm just going to put them all in one location. Okay, now that I've got all my poses in my view. Okay, what I can do is, this is quite neat, I can close this option now. Now I can grab this height tool and I can select every one of my images and I can simply apply it. Uh, it doesn't work that way. You've got to select each one individually because it will apply to the group. So this one is the quickest way to do it. Control V and make sure that you lock your aspect ratio. That's so important. So make sure your aspect ratio is locked. Now you're going to go and paste this in. Make sure that you've pasted that in. Do the same here. Aspect ratio locked. Good. Now you can see this doesn't take too long to do. Ooh, get rid of that value. My mistake. Select the image and then paste this over here. Okay. 
now that we've got our selected poses in, you can now going to go and set these up in the order that you so you just you can decide. So I had one extra pose, so I'm going to get rid of that one for now. So here I've got all my different poses. Okay. Now in this next series, this next row beneath your poses, we're going to use. It's totally up to you. You can use a whole bunch of different colors. So for example. I can create a shape. Now I'm going to use a shape in here. Once I drag the shape in, you can simply drag and make it suit the correct size. This is totally up to you to make it look the way you want. Okay. So for this example, in my previous example, I used as a black background, but maybe I can use a different color here. So now I can change the infill color. I can make that blue. I can go to the boundary, make that transparent so you don't see that. Now I can simply start using some text blocks to illustrate and classify which one of these poses relates to the term or word that I would like to associate that pose to. Now here I've worked on the wrong slide, but you can simply drag and drop the slide to the top and it becomes slide one. So that's how you sort address that issue. Now I can start using, again, insert text block. I can start using some text in here. So each pose will have a name. Okay, so I'm just going to call this pose, I'll use capital letters for this, pose one. Okay, double click in the text. Okay, so select everything, double click, so make sure the text is selected. And I want to change this to be center aligned. And then I can scroll, I can snap this text block between those edges. Then you know that the text is always going to be in the middle. And here you can play with the font size, totally up to you. And you can also add some effects to this font here. You can have all these different, you can drop shadows, for example. That's totally up to you. You can change the direction of the shadows, the angle. Okay, totally up to you. There's a lot of stuff that you can do here. So, totally up to you. Okay, and I'll change that to a different color as well. So, with your text selected, you can go and change this to different colors. Okay, so select, double, make sure all your font selected, double click. And here you can go and change your text color. Okay. You can make it dark. That's totally up to you. I'm going to leave mine like a gray for now. Okay, that's not that legible. You can also add a custom color where you can go and add. So that's also quite neat. I'm going to leave it like that. And if I want to, I can also align this between the two, the two shapes. All I do now is use control. And you'll see it'll snap every time. I'll control down, drag this, it will snap. If things don't quite snap, you can just move things back. It's quite intuitive how this works, okay? This one is not quite in the right location. You want to snap that to the edge. That's good. Make sure the one, this one's the same. Just make sure it will snap. That's perfectly, okay. So sometimes this is not the easy, it doesn't, it's not that intuitive at times, but you see it is trying to work the way it's, I'm intending it to look. So just remember, be careful what you grab sometimes. Hold that down on control. I'm going to put this in this location. Okay. Now that I've got all my font in, now I can simply go and change the wording for each one. So you don't want to go and create a text box every time. Create one bit of text that works well and duplicate it. So remember, drag and control at the same time will allow you to duplicate objects. Okay. Four. And that will be five. Okay. All right, so I've set up my first, my first sheet. Okay, what's pretty cool. Now I can simply, so in this case, maybe, you know what? I'm going to delete the slide because technically I'm going to duplicate all the work I've done here. Duplicate slide. Okay, now I can simply juggle this around and now I'm going to hero my poses. Okay, so this bit of text can go now. So I can get rid of all of this bit of text. Sorry, let's get rid of the text rather. So select the text blocks themselves and get rid of the text blocks themselves. Okay, now that I've got rid of that, now these are my three poses that I'm going to focus on. All we need to do now is we need to go and insert a QR link code for our Instagram page or our Google Photos link where we're going to 
so this QR code will be scanned in the exam. So in essence, we just need to insert a QR code here. So here I've got a website that I use and I'll share this with all of you. It's called QR Code Generator. It's an open source bit of software, which is great and it runs in your browser. Okay, if I go back to Google Slides, let's go back to Google Slides. Don't worry, you'll never lose your work. So as you're working on stuff, it'll keep where you were, where you left off. This is what I like about the software as well, or application. Now I need to insert a QR code in this view. Okay, in addition, I need to make sure that my guides are shown. So show guides. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to go to QR, my QR code generator. I'm going to open up one more tab. I'm going to go to my Google Photos. Okay, in Google Photos, what I'm going to do now is I've got this GIF. So I'm going to click this GIF. I'm going to go to Share. And I'm going to say Create Link. Okay, Create Link. Now, when you're creating a link, you just need to make sure when you share information, that it shares it with the complete class. If you go to share, share, create link, sometimes you must just make sure, let anyone, if this is not the same, you might have to click on this learn more and you might have to go and change your privacy. Okay, but for now, you're going to create a link, you're going to copy the link, you're going to go to your QR code generator, you're going to paste this information, and it'll create a QR code for you. Please note, that the QR code that you create must be a standard, a classic QR code. Please do not use different types of QR codes and different colors. We've just noticed in our experience that this works the best. Now you can specify the size. I can make this up a thousand pixels. That's fine. Right click and what you can do now is you can simply copy this image to your clipboard. You're going to go back to Google Slides and I can simply press Control V or edit paste edit paste and I can paste this object into my view now I'm going to put my QR code in this location remember you can size it to work in this box and you can move it up and down to center it totally up to you now you can simply just use a bit of text you can use another text block so insert text block here you're gonna explain or you're gonna say a bit of you can use a bit of text to explain that this is your QR code link for your GIF. So here you can just simply start typing. Okay. I can change if I double click in the view, I can change where the text starts from. So if I want the text to start from here. Now I can just simply use the plus tool to make this fit. Ah, I'll double click everything in the view, make it 14. Just double click, select all the text, make it 14. Now you can simply select the text again. Now you can use the up and down arrow key. It will start increasing. Sorry, you must double click my apologies. Now you can start using the size tool to get this to the correct size. So I'm going to use it. Just like that, I'm going to extend this to this boundary and extend this to this line over here. And I'm going to center this text block. Okay, just remember, structure your presentation in such a way that makes it legible to read. Okay, and now I'm going to up this until the text fits in. Okay, now you can see I've managed to set up these two A3 sheets. Simply all you need to do now is you'll need to go to file and you need to go to download and you'll need to download this PDF. Okay, now it will download this. I'm going to download this onto my desktop. Now on my desktop, if I open up my PDF presentation, you'll notice it's done a really good job. Now you can simply print this in the computer lab or you can print this at home. Please note this will need to be an A3 document.